In this Flutter app, I have three radio buttons and these buttons allow me to select a snack. If I click on mango, my selected snack becomes mango and the button turns blue. If I click on coconut, the same thing happens and the same happens for chocolate as well if I click on that. Let me show you how to build radio buttons like this in Flutter. We start off with a blank app. As you can see, we have nothing in our app but a blank scaffold. Now I've added an images folder and inside this images folder, I've put in the three images we're going to use for our demo app. And in the pubspec.tml file, I've added this assets line with a reference to the images folder. So let's start by putting a radio button inside the scaffold of this app. Take note that the actual name is radio menu button. There are three properties that are required by the radio menu button. And those are value, which is the value that will be selected when you click on this radio button. And we'll start with the first one and pass in the string mango. The second property we need to provide is group value. And group value refers to the value changed by this specific radio button as well as all the other radio buttons in the same group. In the demo, you saw we had mango, coconut and chocolate. So the value which can be changed to either mango by this radio button or chocolate by another or coconut by another radio button, that is what we refer to as group value. And this value will be a string. So we shall declare it here and call it selected snack. And the initial value, we shall set that to none selected. And so in group value, I will pass selected the snack. And the third property we must define in radio menu button is on changed. This is the function that gets executed when we select this specific radio button. So we'll pass in a function and this function takes the value of this radio button. You can call it any name. I'll go with selected value. Just remember to use the same name when you're executing your function. And the fourth property we must provide inside this radio button is the child. And we're going to go with a simple text widget. And let's call this mango. And now we have our radio button. It's not yet fully functional, but let's build it and see what it looks like. So save, then reload. And you can see we now have our button. If I click on it, nothing happens. So let's go ahead and implement the functionality of this button. The first thing I'd like to do is to quickly change the styling of this button so that we have a button that looks nice. So go ahead and save that for the formatting. So we'll go ahead and put in the style property and this takes a button style. The first aspect of style that we will change is the shape and we'll give it a rounded rectangle shape with a border radius of 10 pixels. The next aspect of style that we'll change is elevation and we'll give it an elevation of two pixels. And the last aspect of style that will change is the background color and we'll give it a background color of white. Before we rebuild, let me make child the last property inside the radio menu button because that's why we're having this blue squiggly line. The child property should always be the last property in our widget. So let's cut that and paste it there. So we save that. Let's rebuild our app. And now we have our nice looking radio button. Now the radio button by default goes all the way to the ends of the app. It takes all the horizontal space available. And so I'd like to restrain that behavior by wrapping our radio menu button inside a sized box. So control shift R, wrap with sized box, and we give it a width of 200 pixels. We save and reload. And there is our radio button. The next thing we'll do is implement the functionality of this button such that when we click on it, our selected snack changes. So first we have to display this selected snack in our app. So we'll wrap everything in a column and put this text widget at the top of the column. So the first child in this column will be a sized box just to give us space between the top and the selected snack text widget. Underneath that, we'll put in a text widget. And inside, we'll put in the phrase selected snack and a reference to this variable. For that, we'll use the dollar sign 
then selected snack. We'll get rid of this const keyword because our widget is no longer constant. Then we'll add a sized box to give us spacing between this text widget and our radio button. And we save that and reload our app. Now we have our selected snack phrase and our radio button. So let's quickly center everything first. And we'll do that by wrapping our column in a center widget. Reload. And there is our app with everything centered nicely. Now let's implement this unchanged property of our radio button. And what we want is every time we click on our radio button, the value of the selected snack changes to the value of the radio button. And how we'll do that is using the set state function. This function ensures that every time we click on the button, the app gets rebuilt to reflect our new choice. And we want each time we click on this radio button, the value of this selected snack changes to the selected value. So selected snack equals selected value. And now we need to add an exclamation mark just to make sure that in case this value is blank, our app does not crash. And finally, we need to close off our function with a semicolon. So we save this and reload our app. And now when we click on this radio button, you can see that our selected snack now changes to mango. Are you enjoying this video so far? Please consider liking it and subscribing to this channel. Let's go on. The next thing we need to do is add the image to our radio button and then replicate this radio button so that we can have two more radio buttons in our app. So let's go ahead and add this image. And for that, we will wrap this in a row and then add the image to the row. The first child in our row will be a size box and we will give this a width of 10. The next child will be our image, our mango image. And we'll wrap this image in a sized box. And we'll give it a height of 50 pixels. And finally, we'll add a sized box to give us space between the image and the text. So we'll go ahead and save this, then reload our app. And now we have our radio button with the image and the text. So let's go ahead and copy paste this and then change the values of the radio buttons as well as the reference to the image. Copy that. And between the radio buttons, we'll put in sized boxes with a height of 20 pixels. So we'll go ahead and paste in the radio button, change the values to coconut, then add our last radio button, which is chocolate, and change these values to chocolate. Let's go ahead and save this up and reload it. Now we have our three radio buttons. If we click on mango, our snack changes to mango. If we click on coconut, that changes to coconut. And if we click on chocolate, that changes to chocolate. And that is how you build radio buttons in Flutter. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comment section below and I will help you out. And if you have any other comments, leave them in the comment section as well. If you have found value in this video, be sure to like it and subscribe to this channel with the notifications turned on so that you get notified each time I upload a new video. This has been the Flutter Coach and I will see you in the next one.